I think that that employment cost index went a long way to sort of changing some views on that as well. As I mentioned, Evan Lucas from IG standing by patiently in Melbourne. Evan, um, just let's get right to it. I mentioned it, it looks as if there was sort of a perfect storm of bad news. Argentina, Portugal, end of the month, um, you know, Russia, Ukraine, earnings season mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, how, yep. do we put, how do we make sense of it all? Yeah, you can also probably put in there Israel and also the Palestine conflicts as well. I think the one thing to probably to start with is that if you have a look from the situation that's going on at the moment, you've got top-down and bottom-up issues that actually drove the whole volatility movement from last night. So having a look in Europe, you saw Adidas revising down their full-year numbers quite substantially. In fact, they now expect FY profit to come in around about 650 million US dollars, down from around about 830 for around about to 930 was the range. So substantial decrease. They talk about the fact that Russia is certainly impacting them. Siemens is another group that talks about that. BP is also there. So there's the bottom-up view. You also saw last night ExxonMobil having fairly poor numbers and also talking about the fact that Russia and their sanctions will have a fact. So there's the bottom up. Top down, you already alluded to it. There's actually positive news that could be negatively driving the market. And that comes around, as you already alluded to, that, in, that employment inflation figure. Last night at 0.7 for the quarter versus 0.5 estimates, which means that is the highest growth rate you've seen since 2008. It means on a year-on-year -year basis you're at 2%. And that had always been described as slightly noise from the Fed and that means that you now have to really take that seriously. The expectations now of some sort of rise in the Fed funds rate is well and truly on the cards. Tonight with the non-farm payrolls you need to look at the average hourly sorry the, yeah the average hourly earnings in that uh, in that figure that is certainly another part of what the Fed looks at and expectations are for that to grow quite strongly as well because wage inflation has been one area that they've sort of been watching suggesting that it's not as good and, and utilized as well as it could be. Other part of it is the fact that part-time employment has also been higher than expected and another reason why they're saying that utilisation is low, why they're still slack in the employment market and that too is starting to slide as well as more full-time employment is created. So top-down US data is good. Top-down data over in Europe, however, is not so much. Inflation last night was not fantastic. You then also had bottom-up data with the fact that this Banco Espirito Santo looks like having to tuck the market at 42% drop and suggesting there could be peripheral issues with that. Last one is probably Argentina. It's a frontier market, so it doesn't actually affect the global sort of situation, but having any form of default swaps that could be anywhere in, or in the geography also it puts a bit of concern. So all of that, all of that mm -hmm. sum, summing up, is a volatility event and why we saw such a sharp movement. The final part of it was Alan Greenspan, so Ben Bernanke's predecessor. He himself has come out and said in a Bloomberg article very, very clearly that when you have a sharp, rapid rise in equities like we have for such a sustained period of time, you have to assume that a significant correction is on the way. So words of warning coming from Greenspan, but let's also perhaps put this in perspective. We used to sw see these swings, these 1% and 2% rises and falls all the time in the market. Yep. So given that long list that we were just talking about and the fact that it was the end of the month, and we're waiting for non-farm payroll data tonight. You know, keeping things, keeping some calm perspective. I mean, yep. really, this 2% drop through the overnight period, how do we sort of rate that as far as sentiment goes? Yeah, and that's a really good point to put in there. The other reason why this is such an interesting event is because we have had market calm for almost a quarter, and that is such a rare thing since the GFC to actually see that. And you're right, you know, last year, you know, and then if you go back to 2011 and 2012, volatility events of, you know, 1% to 2% movements in either direction became commonplace, and, and that's why it's quite an interesting thing to see. I agree. You need to put some calm back into us. You need to see what happens on the headline figure with the non-farm payrolls, whether or not you are actually continuing to see that kind of growth that we expect. I mean, the issue is is that you've now got a situation where liquefying profits is going to become quite an event because we are teetering at record highs over in the US. You've seen the, US, the European markets until around about five or six weeks ago also making records in something like the DAX. The CAC is up there and so is the FTSE. All of that is probably why you are seeing slight drops mm -hmm. and, and quite dramatic drops because you want to take profit. There, there, there is no doubt there's nervousness that we're going to lose that profit and therefore I don't want to sort of walk 
walk away from it. So head fund managers down to the retail investor is all watching very closely. So that's why you need to put that in perspective. I think you are going to probably see a small event of maybe a 5% pullback, maybe not in the next couple of days, but over the next couple of weeks, there's no doubt we need to have it because it's been such a rapid rise in terms of what's happened over the last month here in Australia particularly. We've actually managed to well and truly outperform the rest of the world. The US markets were actually down for the month and we finished up around about 1.6% and that is a very, very strong move indeed. So here locally, I think that we're probably due for a little bit of pullback because we're also probably going to get some seller facts as we start earning season in mm -hmm. earnest next Thursday with Rio. Yeah, yeah, it, it, a little bit of excitement sort of out there as to what's to come. Today, we're expecting to get not only the HSBC confirmation read on manufacturing, mm -hmm. but also the official read uh, coming from China. So do you think yep. that those could potentially be market moving events? You know, will the local market hinge on how that goes? Yeah, I think they will. And the reason for it, we saw a really nice rally, in the, in the, particularly in the material space, on the flash figures last week. So HSB figures, not only did they surprise, but they surprised very, very strongly on the upside. 52, that's the highest it's been in around about eight to nine months, shows that small and medium enterprises are actually expanding over in China. The official data hasn't ever gone into contraction over that period, but was actually starting to move into better expansion. So all of that may actually put a bit of a flaw on what will be a flaw, uh, fall in the material space. BHP's ADR is pointing down around about 1.2%, so 44 cent drop to around about 80, I think it's 38.90 or thereabouts off the top of my head. So expect to see some volatility at the start with regards to the materials. If we do get a good print, it may put a floor, but I don't think it will catch anything. We are definitely in for a negative day. Okay, where else are you looking? We did have ResMed earnings out in the US. Um, we're looking toward a Woodside Petroleum vote today. Where else mm -hmm. are the Flash Point Seven? Yeah, the Woodside one's quite an interesting one because it may actually therefore show that the Woodside has to go back to the drawing board there. Interesting, and that's suggesting that basically 28% of the voters want those franking credits in their back pocket rather than using some sort of consolidation. So that will be one to watch. ResMed results were disappointing over in the US, there's no doubt about that, and that may put a little bit of issue around the healthcare space. There's no doubt that a lot of people are pointing to the premium that maybe they've all run up, so watching Cochlear as well. So that will be an interesting one to see in terms of how that goes. In t anything else regarding sort of you know, stocks at the moment, stock specific, not a huge amount of news today that will actually drive the market. Again, it will be all sort of basically buying the rumour, sell the facts, moving into, into earnings season. And as I said, it's real on Thursday to really start how that will actually plan out. Mm -hmm. Evan, always a pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks, Nadine. Evan Lucas from IG in Melbourne.